Hey, uh, I'm back. This is part two, and picking up where I left off with my mage build. Yep, I got killed by a phantom. If you haven't seen, uh, you can go back and watch my first part where I talk about some of my gaming experience and some of my recent things that's going on. Um, right off the bat, I'm just going to run and quickly get to this, uh, I think the second bonfire in this place, the Cardinal Tower. <clears throat> I don't want to have to deal with all these guys again. They're pretty easy. There's no, no need to, you know, even fight them actually. So, uh, <clears throat> continue about, continue along. Uh, my plan for this build is to kind of try and finish everything oh shit oh shit am I gonna die here <laughs> I can't believe I get... oh my god I'm getting destroyed time for a soul spear boom what didn't kill the other guy well oh, whatever just kill him there so if you run up only one guy uh, the, the other guys on the bottom don't come up all the way, so you can safely just kill those two. I'm going to pick up my souls and then get to the bonfire. <coughs> um, today's been a pretty, pretty hectic day at work. I woke up late, took the late train to work, got in just before my meeting. And... It's my first day back after my vacation, so a lot of shit was going on, and you know, just had to catch up what what was happening. Apparently, everything failed. Like, you know, typical when you're not there, and everybody was trying to look for you. Ah, fun day, right? So, about like it took like two hours just to get everything that was supposed to be fixed done. So like just 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 to catch up took like two hours and then that was lunchtime. So during lunch I just ate McDonald's. Didn't feel like going anywhere else, but McDonald's was kind of disgusting. I don't know, man. I I don't really like this McDonald's thing anymore. I work downtown Toronto. There's a lot of different restaurants, but you know I'm a loner. I don't eat with my coworkers, so I'm not gonna go like fancy restaurant by myself. That's just stupid. But you know, sometimes I do go like nice uh, with my fiance. She works downtown too, but you know, unlike me, she packs lunch mostly. So I gotta get used to packing lunch, packing lunch too, to save up money and stuff. Holy shit, I'm getting wrecked by this hollow soldier. What the fuck? Oh shit, almost fall. But yeah. After lunch, went back and... Oh my god, there's so much shit to be done. And things were failing left and right. Gotta fix co, fix this. Oh, not a fun day. So I went in at uh, 6 in the morning. I'm sorry, I woke up at 9 in the morning and got to work around 10. I didn't leave until 7.30 and got home at 8.30. Had a little dinner, and as soon as I'm done dinner, I went and did this video. <laughs> uh, I'm so stressed out, and this actually helps me relax for some reason. I don't know, I'm just talking to myself. I guess it's like... It's like a psychology therapy, I guess you would say. Or maybe I'm just psycho. <coughs> um, yeah, that's pretty much my day, but that's not really what people are here for. They're here for Dark Souls, I hope. My Dark Souls PvE pl gameplay isn't like the best thing ever because, you know... I suck. I'm just very casual. I'm a casual gamer. I'm not like 
some crazy people that know how to do Dark Souls 2 under like two hours or under like three hours. That's not me. I play this game really take my time. And I try to learn everything. Or get everything. But <clears throat> right now I'm really enjoying this character. I really look love the way it looks. So last time yesterday. Uh, why would I say yesterday? Last part. I talked about like my experience with Final Fantasy characters and I stated that Final Fantasy 9 was my all-time favorite JRPG. What I failed to mention was that Final Fantasy has other series too. And one of those f series that I actually played was Final Fantasy Tactics and I didn't talk about that. I actually love Final Fantasy Tactics. It was very, very different from the other games. I played it after I beat Final Fantasy 9, I think. After that, you know, a lot of people told me, like, this game was good, blah, blah, blah. And, you know, I gave it a try. I like the t style of gaming, like, um, a turn-based strategy game. I loved those back, back in the day when I was playing it. It, you know, it picked my brain a lot just to figure out how to deal with certain like fights it's not like a simple you know just overpower everybody and win the game I mean in Final Fantasy Tactics you can but it took a, a lot more than that just to uh, before you can beat the game it actually takes a lot of planning and strategy and how you set up your characters is very important. The only thing I don't like about that game is how the story, uh, how there's not much exploration. The Everything is just true. like, you know, very linear. And it's like a cutscene, it's like a mission based. Every, every, everything was mission based. Oh, here, I killed a pursuer. Yay. He's very easy when you have magic. Actually, he's very easy in general when there's no, when there's not two of them. If there's two of them, uh, if you have magic, they're still fucking easy. But if it's just one of them, you should be able to kill him with anything. Like even my dagger, I can kill them. I can use just my dagger and then have one hand completely with nothing and just keep parrying him all day. It's very easy. So back to uh, Final Fantasy Tactics. Um, yeah, it's a very fun game. Story-wise, gets a little bit crazy, and I can't remember what it was. It's not one of those very memorable storylines. I mean, I remember there being like you're you're a squire, and there's a princess you're supposed to save. Blah blah blah. Your best friend's sister gets killed, and he becomes like kind of roguish, and then near the end, he becomes your best friend again. <clears throat> it's kind of cool, kind of not. But what this inspired me was to talk about JRPGs in general, like the ones that I've played before. Because I played a shit ton of JRPGs. A shit ton. But, you know, like, my favorite is still Final Fantasy IX. Not by far though. There's there's a couple um, JRPGs that come really close to being my favorite, but just a little bit shy of being my favorite. So let's talk talk about um, let's put this in order of I guess from my least favorite JRPG to my most fate well my second most favorite. So the first RPG I would talk about would be, um, let's see, Chrono Trigger. <laughs> I know I'm I'm just like pissing people off like left there and right. Like last time I said Final Fantasy VII wasn't my favorite. Now I'm saying like 
Chrono Trigger is like on the bottom of my list. Well, the fact that it, it is on my list means that, you know, I do like that game, but just not that much. It's probably because I played it really, really f um, much after, you know, like when PS2 was out. I, I played Chrono Trigger after PS2 was out, you know, like there's tons of games from PS2 that look super good. And I still play Chrono Trigger and I played it all the way to the end. So it has to mean something, right? So it was what what I loved about Chrono Trigger was again the characters build up were really good. The villains in that game I mem I remember being pretty good too. Um, the combat system is all right to me. It's by that point like everybody's done it, so it's not like something special. I guess if I played it when Chrono Trigger just came out, I would be like super, you know, hyped and, you know, I, I would love it more, but I didn't, which is unfortunate. I like that game, but it's on the bottom of my favorite list. So, next. Next game I want to talk about. The next game is called Wild Arms 2. I did not play the first one. And I did not play the other ones afterwards, but I played that one. Um, it was kind of funny how that happened. Like, I just got my PS1 um, at the time, and my friend was selling me all these games. And out of all of them, th there was this game called Wild Arms 2, and then he's like, oh, I can give you that game for free. I don't really like it. And at that point, I was not that exposed to RPGs at all like the only one I've played at that point was like um, Final Fantasy 5 or something and I thought like okay cool let's give this game a try at first I find it kind of boring and a lot of the puzzles in there were like really tedious and really annoying but you know as I play through it there were some really nice ca character development and some really nice um, storyline. I can't remember the storyline, so maybe the storyline wasn't that good. But I remember being very intrigued. Or there's a couple memorable scenes in that um, in that game. And one of the scenes was like one of the characters. Uh, I can't remember what his name was, but he was supposed to be dead. Like he sacrificed himself to help. His friends get away from a certain cave. It's the guy with the long hair and stuff, like the prisoner in the beginning. Um, he was supposed to help, like he was supposed to be sacrificed, and everybody was sad and all that bullshit. And then, you know, like it was a couple of dungeons after that, and then the world was about to blow up. And then out of nowhere, this guy comes back, and there's a rail gun in his hand, and he just fucking saves the day it was like the most badass thing ever and you know that was the most memorable thing in that game like this badass just comes back from nowhere and it's so cool like not he, he doesn't just save the day once he saved the day twice and that was so awesome that made me want that made this game like one of my favorites even though I do not remember anything else. Oh yeah, I just killed the, the giant. The last giant. In, I don't know, 30 seconds. Pew, pew, pew. So that was Wild Arms 2. The next game I'm going to talk about is... Breath of Fire 4. Breath of Fire 4 is a game by Capcom. It's pretty standard in the way like how like it's turn based and it's not like a strategy where you have to move your characters like those uh, really Final Fantasy type RPG. So it's not like super um, com complicated and 
the level system is not like crazy uh there are but there's a lot of s stuff that you can do in that game that's pretty fun i can't remember i think there's like fishing games and then there's some really cool humor in there but that game is so good not because of the gameplay but because of the story and because of of course of the character every good rpg will have good characters this game has epic epic characters like the um the main character there's two of them the one that you play most they don't he doesn't talk and he's not really that interesting to be honest but his alter ego the bad guy the antagonist man that guy is a fucking badass and the stuff he goes through and the stuff that the the, the designers made him go through is holy shit it's not for kids man some of the stuff that happens in the game is like holy fuck how do you oh my god it was so mind-boggling i was so mind fucked at some of the stuff that happened in the game it's a very good game like it does like fuck around with your emotions in that game so when i was playing it when i was a teenager i just got like holy shit it's so epic so when i got grew grew older i did play it again i did play it all the way to the end i was like holy shit this story is still fucking epic i love it breath of fire 4 holy shit one of my favorite games rpgs the next up it would be secret of mana secret of mana this game is like it the first time I played like a action RPG type game. I remember spending so much of my college days playing this game. Like I didn't play it when I was a kid when it was on NES. I played it when I was like in university, college and there was a lot of downtime and I just needed something to do. It was a very fun game in terms of uh, gameplay and it was one of the first games that you know RPGs that allow you to play um, multiple players I uh, let me take that back I actually played this game when it came out in NES but I didn't own it it was my friends I was the second player and that's how I knew about this game and when I uh, got to university I played it just by myself and completed the game Story-wise is pretty okay, but the gameplay is where it's at, man. This game has one of the most um, slickest and smoothest type of gameplay ever. Like you just continuously battle through, and you just fight enemies if you want to. You don't have to fight them. It was one of those rare, rare. Um, it kind of was a new new type of thing and it was fun I loved it the story could be better the characters could be better but eh, I didn't care it was still good some memorable times next up one of my f top three favorites number three is Chrono Cross <laughs> Uh, you guys might wonder why. What the fuck, man? Chrono Trigger's on the bottom and Chrono Cross on the top. Well, man, I love Chrono Cross. I did a character on this game. I even did a freaking video on this game crossover with Dark Souls if you guys want to go back and check it out. Chrono Cross, why do I love it? There's fucking huge amount of characters in there. There's huge amount of content and side content. What I love about RPGs is exploration and this game has tons of that even though there's a strict uh, world map and strict everything there's tons of places you can explore and there's tons of options you can do you can bring this guy or that girl or you know like you can choose your party members to interact with other people and actually have different results that's what RPGs is about RPGs is not about like get, getting to the end. It's about exploration. It's about like 
meaning interacting with the world, you know. It's not like Dark Souls where you're trying to kill your enemy and that's your end goal, no. Well, Dark Souls, I don't know. Some people play f for different reasons, like some people play for PvP, some people play it for lore, some people play it just because it's hard, you know. But for Chrono Cross, it's actually a game where you try to experiment on things. That's what makes it so good. And I think I played that game like three times. It was such a good game. I loved it. And oh, by the way, Chrono Cross, the music from there, my favorite. Nothing else compares to it in terms of music for me. That's the best gaming music ever. Even Chrono Trigger, you know, like what? The sound from an SNES is not going to beat the sound from a PS1. I'm sorry. It might to some people, but not for me. And now to my number two most favorite uh, game of all Star Ocean 2. Well, Star Ocean, the second story, or something like that. I've never played the first Star Ocean one, but Star Ocean 2, the, what got me into it was the gameplay, the exploration, the easter eggs you can get in every town when you do a private action, and the leveling up, the grinding stuff, and how you can freaking make your par characters just broken as hell and just, and yet still, somehow if you unlock the galaxy mode, the game will still kick your ass even though you're freaking broken already like you have the most broken skills and you can just stun lock some guy into place and just keep whacking at him and still the game can still kick your ass that game my god i i played it on ps1 when it first came out and then i got it again on psp and then i got it again when it released the second version of the psp I can't get enough of that game. It's so much fun. Uh, again, there's a lot of characters in there. Um, some of the music is cool. It's not like the best. And what I really, really enjoy about these games, like these art JRPGs, is that you know it leaves some impression on me. You know, like it does. It doesn't try to teach you a lesson in life, like hopefully not. Do not base your life on RPGs. It's just a game. But, you know, there's some concepts and ideas and things that you can use from these games, like dialogues, how to talk to people, how to interact. I mean, it's kind of fucking stupid. It, it's kind of fucking creepy if you think about it, but... You know, sometimes when you interact with a player, uh, with real people, it's a lot different from what you can interact in the game. But what if you can translate what how you interact with uh, NPCs to real life? Like, would you be able? Would would that be better? Would that make a better world or whatever? Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, and yeah, right now I am at the Maduff Bonfire and I'll be doing a little bit more grinding here. Well, not grinding. I'm just going to do a little bit more exploration in Lost Bastille. And I'll catch you guys next time with, the uh, I think, the Sentries boss fight. So I'll see you guys next time. Toodles.